Alright, I'm gonna make this rant type video. Um, about something that Rubik has done recently. And it's the stupidest thing that they've done. Which is to ban all 3x3 three three in the EU, um, from being sold in stores, um, in the EU that are not Rubik's brand. So, like, a good majority of these 3x3s three three in the background are not Rubik's brand. Only a small portion of them are Rubik's brand. Like, uh, Rubik's brand right here, Rubik's brand, um, this Rubik's brand for the anniversary cube, Rubik's brand right here, another Rubik's brand over here, another one and another one, and then another one right here, and then there's a few out there somewhere, but you see my point, there's a good majority of these 3 by 3s that are not all Rubik's brand, but most of them are not Rubik's brand. But for 40 years, um, uh, Rubik has had the, his pattern for the cube, um, uh, up. But now, recently, seriously, come on, why the hell do Rubik's do this? They updated the pattern, and the updated pattern, this is a state from the, um, from this lawsuit thing that they had. That, effectively, this decision allowed Rubik's Square to claim protection for any flat, um, sided cube with equally spaced orthodontal, orthodontal, orthodontal 3x3 three three grid whatsoever surface direction with the toy and game, within the toy and game category. So, effectively, that means any cube with a 3x3 three three type grid, no matter if it's um, a 3x3 three three puzzle, Rubik's Cube type puzzle, or if it's building block, um, or even a game, but still, seriously, that bit stupid. So, effectively, puzzles like, um, this YJ 15mm 3x3 that has the edges bigger than the corners, um, and then this Dianma that has edges that are smaller than the corners, and center smaller than, um, the corners, make it, um, more effective to sell because it doesn't follow the rule of equally space. And also, it does not affect um, pillow puzzles like this V-Cube 3x3 um, pillow. So, that effectively um, rules out a huge amount of cubes out there. And even because of this, it's just stupid. Plus, another claim is that there are other uh, Rubik's Cube infringement legal cases that were stated pending the European General Court deliberation, but now can be concluded with almost certain chance of set in favor in the Rubik's trademark. They're referring to a few that they had in the past. Um, like, for say, example, Rubik's first dying because of the enforcement of the orange side. Like, as you can see from this, the orange is not the same uh, from this 25th anniversary cube and then this pink Um But, this, first of all, how I figured out about this, how I heard about this was a week ago, um, Lubix had the eBay shop, um, shut down, well, not shut down, but compromised to the point where it's almost shut down, so they could not sell anything, any of the Lubix cube or lube in the EU. Um, so, that's 
it's just a little stupid. It's like saying that, but you can still find um puzzle from um Chinese shop like like a wall by eighteen hours to um cube ZZ and a few others, and also you can still buy from American stores like Cube Depot, um, Speed Cube Shop, The Cubicle, and a few others, but no European shop. Um, so that just seems a little stupid. And another thing is that this decision may appeal again to the European Court Justice Highest Authority within the next two months, only producing. Blah blah blah. That was pretty much the. Um, so. Yeah. Um, in addition, the court found that the cubic grid surface of the mark differed significantly from other three dimensional puzzles available on the market. That the structure, therefore, has distinctive character which enables consumers to identify the producer of the good in respect of which the mark is registered. If you want to see the full article about this, I'll have the link down below. But, seriously, this is just a bit stupid. Um, I mean, really. They had 40 years to deal with this situation. And they're just now dealing with it now? Come on. Plus, also, although they're doing the right thing about stepping up and making better Q, but even with their newest 4x4, they took a big huge step down um, from the older design. It's like saying, it's like telling Shang Sao to upgrade the 6x6, six um, and then they decided, oh, you know what, let's go ahead and use the VQ6 mechanism, and that's screwed, because the VQ6 is horrible, while the Shang Sao 6 currently is good, but not the best, but it is decent, much better than the VQ. And with this newer 4x4, it's just pure crap. See? That's one big issues with it. And then there's some other big issues, but the pop on these, this newer 4x4 is just ridiculous. So, overall, Rubik's had made the biggest, stupidest thing recently. And my next um, thing that I predict of them doing is trademark and put a trademark on the wood and shape cube so that now we're going to have to call these hexahedron. Like for say example, this puzzle, normally called the void cube, would, would be changed the name to Void hexahedron. Well, hexahedron um, is a geometrical shape term for any um, geometrical shape that has six sides on it. No matter what the shape of the sides look like, but they're in a six side. So, like for say example, like um. Um, I don't have a good example right here, but, get the point. Um, there, it's like that. So, you see my point, it's just stupid, and shop within the EU would have a big hard time selling all these puzzles. And that is just stupid.